It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Tonight I wanted to come on a little bit later because I wanted to uh, show Colored Valley Cooks what I had cooked. And I don't know why, but I got sleepy around 8 o'clock. I was so sleepy. And I started reading and stuff, and then I got sleepy and I thought, I'm going to take me a nap. I took like a 30 minute nap. You could kind of tell by the look in my eyes when I was tasting that food that I that I looked sleepy because I just woke up. Chris woke me up. He went fishing today with our neighbor Mike, and he was uh, getting out and getting the boat and backing in the trailer. And he called me, woke me up right before I went on uh, to show y'all that crock pot meal. That's my pork and bean recipe that I invented. And I really think it's good. I just thought it would be a good idea. And boy, is it delicious. Uh, today is July the 29th. It is getting close for time to school to start for us. Amy starts school uh, Wednesday. And she has open house tomorrow. May's going to Six Flags tomorrow. And her school doesn't start until the 20th of August. So... Um, things will be back to normal pretty soon, and uh, it'll be nice. Kind of kind of normal, anyway. Today's July the 29th, and uh, this is Charles Stanley's book. And tonight's um, lesson is called Hitting Rock. And you've heard this story before, I'm sure. So, um, y'all are going to recognize this verse. Many of the verses he uses are verses that you're, you know, that we've heard several times before. It says, those on the rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no firm root. They believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Um, my old fan is on. I'm, I'm going to leave it on. I hope it's not distracting y'all too much. Um. This is coming out of Luke chapter 8, verse 13, if y'all want to look it up in, in your Bible. I'm going to read his study, and then I'm going to pick up the Bible, and we'll, and we'll look at it a little bit more in the verses, okay? Uh, but he said, yesterday we saw that Jesus told the parable of the sower so that we can examine our hearts and understand how we're progressing in Christian life, in our Christian life. The next condition Jesus addresses is when they are rocks impeding our growth. Although we may have a saving faith, our trust is shallow and it has no root because of the stony areas beneath the surface. So when there's trouble, we doubt God. We can liken that rocky soil in our hearts to the internal issues we wrestle with. The wounded areas the coping mechanisms, and places we have learned that we cannot trust anyone. We may not even realize how deep they go. But every time there's a trial in that area, we doubt God and struggle terribly. Friend, is this you? Are you hitting a wall in your relationship with Him? Thinking about the challenge you're facing right now, what old wounds does it bring up? You may have learned not to trust others in that area, but God is always trustworthy. Break through the stony hindrance by resolving to have faith in Him regardless of the pain or your fears. And then he always has a thing at the end, and I say this every time, but you never know who's new. And it says, Jesus, I want to trust you, breaking through the rocky places. Break through my rocky places and heal me. Um, my hope is in Jesus because he is always trustworthy. So, um, that is the, the uh, parable of the sower. And they talk about, you know, he talks about sowing the seed. And really, it's more about the fruit that we produce as Christians uh, than it is about our personal struggles on the, you know. But he uses it in that way to help us see that not only could the stony ground, as it's used in this verse, 
uh, relate to us in our saving faith, but it can also relate to our heart and whether or not our heart is stony and has the same hindrances uh, because of, you know, because of what we're allowing and not allowing God to be able to do. Um, I was going to look, let's see. I'm looking in my, in my um, scripture now. But it's a, it's a pretty, it's a really pretty, um, per, you know, verse. I was looking what, to see what um, this lady has to say about it. Okay, I want to read this so y'all kind of understand what a parable is. <laughs> because not everybody knows what a parable is, okay? And this is a good, kind of a good explanation right here. It says, to bring new understanding to God's truth. My dogs are barking. It says, to bring new understanding to God's truth. Jesus told stories or parables. Jesus' parables proclaim the gospel. And he often used parables when he put into situations, when put into situations of conflict. The central theme in Jesus' parables was the kingdom of God. Parables involved the use of metaphors which could be understood only by those who would search for the meaning therein, thus separating the genuine seeker from the indifferent listener. And then they have a chart in this Bible because this is a women's Bible. It says women... And the parables of Jesus. There's a chart, it says. Um, I was looking to see what she said about fruit as well. Okay, so Jesus used parables. Another reason he used parables was because, and this is talking about the, the skeptics. Um, he had a lot of people following him at this time. When we're reading in this chapter of Luke, there's a, it, the chapter starts out telling you all these different people and who was following him and who was listening to him, okay? Um, there were some skeptics in the group, of course, so Jesus would teach in parables. And what that means is instead of just laying stuff out there in black and white so the skeptics could condemn him or... Um, be more skeptical skeptical of him. He started speaking in ways that they would never understand on purpose. And I know that seems kind of crazy, but that is exactly what he did. Uh, I guess because he got tired of fooling with them, so he decided that he would show them a thing or two and talk in a parable, and that way only the ones who really wanted to know what it meant would find out what it meant. And and he would tell them what it meant, okay? So, um, it says, And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured, devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and they choked it. But others fell on the good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said the things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The purpose of parables, uh, it says, when the disciples asked him, saying, what does the parable mean? He said to you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. So it was a way, really and truly, for him to not um, talk directly to the skeptics. 
okay? It says the power, the parable of the sower is explained. It says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So when he's telling them that seed is sown, it, it's talking about the word of God, which is the word of God in our Bible today, okay? So it says the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the first one he talks about is um, the seed that is just um, thrown, you know, by the wayside. So that's when someone talks about the gospel and the person who's listening does not even really listen and it's kind of thrown to the side so the devil it says comes and takes them away and keeps them from believing and being saved okay the second one was the ones on a rock and those who when they hear receive the word with joy so they hear it and they're happy about it and these have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. So what he's talking about here is the believe they are believers and they believe and they have joy in their heart and they get saved and then they just go about their life never reading the word, never feeding their soul or the Holy Spirit. And so they do fall typically into temptation, okay? And they just kind of fall away, okay? And which is was me at a you know at a younger age I got saved but then I never read the word of God I prayed but that was just me talking to God not God talking to me so I did I fell to the wayside until one day I picked up his word and I got close to him again okay and then it says now the ones that fell among thorns are those who when they have heard go out and are choked with cares riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity so these are those there's also those that listen they get saved but what happens is they're consumed by their own cares and they're they're the ones who don't really realize it but they're being selfish and all they think about is themselves and all they think about is their um cares and their riches and the pleasures of life for themselves and they bring no fruit to maturity that kind of reminds me how solomon talks about uh vanity vanity all is vanity you know and he talks about um you know solomon was a man that had everything he was definitely one that had riches and pleasures of life and um he tried everything in the world searching and the whole, the whole uh, chapter, I mean the whole book of Ecclesiastes is Solomon telling us from his perspective, which he was the wisest man that ever lived, um, that really and truly no matter what you did, no matter who you were in life, uh, when you died, you couldn't take it with you, um, and that you should, you know, that you should live life to the fullest every day. And that um, life in general, and we are in general, generally vain, you know, and life was, a lot of it was vanity. So he talks about the, the best thing in life is really is God and what we do with, you know, our, what we do with God and what we do for God. And so um, that kind of just reminds me of Solomon because I just know that Solomon had everything, everything. Of course, Solomon didn't have the gospel. He was in the Old Testament. But he did have uh, the law a little bit. So, all right. And then the last one, of course, is the great one. The ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and they bear fruit with patience. And so, um, I guess the thing that we can learn from this more than anything is if you're a Christian and you have been saved, and you heard the gospel and you believed it. Uh, think about tonight, which one are you? Are you the one that heard the gospel and didn't uh, fully 
trust in Jesus Christ and get saved and it fell by the wayside and the devil took it from you so that you wouldn't be saved and believe? Are you the one who got saved and um, the roots were in a rock so after a while they you know withered away and you fell into temptation like I did when I was young because you never fed on the Word of God and you never did the things that you need to do to, to stay strong or are you the one that um, you're saved but you're so consumed with your own cares in this life and the things around you that you never focus on God and the other people in your life and that you've become more, you know, thinking mostly about yourself because that also, you know, can cause you not to bear fruit? Or are you the one that's the good ground and you've come to the place in your life when um, you enjoy God's Word and you enjoy studying about God's Word and you enjoy the fact that you're saved and a child of God and you're ready to tell other people and sow the seed. Um, you know, just think about it because, I mean, everybody is one of those four. You're one of those four things that we've talked about tonight. So think about where you are in that group and where you want to be in that group. And um, it's not that hard to be on the good ground because I tell you why, because we don't do any of it, God does. And so once we learn that we can depend on Him, then we read His Word because we know He loves us and we want to hear from Him and not just us talk to Him through prayer. Um, and then we grow in our faith and He becomes inside of us through the Holy Spirit. We're, we, the Holy Spirit's always in us, but the more we feed on His Word, then the Holy Spirit gets fed. The more He is in us, the more He can work through us. So remember that. Um, that is just something I've learned over the last few weeks, and I've said it over and over, but it's a really good thing to think of. It's a really good thing to think about and meditate on. And um, our, our service Sunday at church was wonderful, and I took really good notes, and Amy took good notes. And I do want to go over that with you guys because it was really good. Um, so I may do that tomorrow night. Um, I could go ahead and just look at Bible study for tomorrow and just see. Tomorrow is the same. It's the same verse, the same verses. And it, it, so we'll just go ahead and read it. It says, The seeds which fell among the thorns are the ones who have heard, and they go on their way, and they're choked with worries and riches and pleasures of life, and they bring fruit to no fruit to maturity. Now we're going to see what Charles Stanley says because y'all have already got, kind of got my take on it. So um, we'll, we'll go ahead and read this. And let me go see if he talks about, yeah, he talks about the good soil too. And then um, I guess tomorrow I'll talk about the good soil because I want to start with it to talk about what was talked about at Church Sunday because it was really, really good. And it, it, it makes very encouraging to you. It's a very encouraging message, okay? So this one says, as we continue studying the parable of the sower, we see that the next impediment Jesus addresses is the thorns that choke the effectiveness of his word. The realities of life, the worries, the riches, the pleasures can suffocate what he tries to accomplish in us. In essence, thorns are the external things we turn to as our earthly security or comfort other than God. They can be anything, money, relationships, addictions, even escapist, entertainment, whatever you rely upon for self-esteem, safety, worth, or even just a brief getaway from the pleasures of life. The point is, however, that you're turning to these things instead of to the Father. And because they are a priority to you, God's Word always comes second. Ultimately, because of them, you choose your wisdom over His, and that never works out well. So consider, when bad news or stressors hit, 
Where do you run for comfort? Is there anything other than Jesus? Or if it's anything other than Jesus, it's impeding you from pressing on to maturity. Remove its choke hold and turn to him. Says Jesus, it'll be difficult to let go of what you're bringing to mind, but with your help I can. Okay, so um, this is just a, a great parable in the Bible that he gives us um, and teaches us how we hear. It's really all about how we hear his word. How do we really hear his word and does it really get rooted, okay, in our life and in our hearts and in our mind? And in our souls, it, is, it, is it really getting rooted? Or is it just getting in there a little bit? Okay? So, um, y'all just think on that. And then we will talk about the good seed and the encouraging things that we can do for others tomorrow. And uh, we're going to go ahead and say our prayers. And I'm so glad you all joined me. It's very nice to have everybody on here. and Very encouraging for me um, as I bring the Word of God to you guys. And I do love you, and I do keep you in my prayers. Even before I took my nap today, I prayed for y'all. I mean, tonight, I prayed for y'all. So, I hope you keep uh, us in your prayers as well as a family. And um, let's just go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word. There's nothing as beautiful as your word. And I pray that each of us listening will think about this parable that you've given us to show us how your word can be rooted if we allow it to be so that we can sow fruit for you. It's all about you. And you show us this in this parable because what you want is fruit from us. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us will think about that and we will get rooted in your word to stay strong um and we also know that that's our armor lord to get through this life and to get through everything that we need and to have the right attitude um, be with us as we go throughout tonight help us stay safe and um we'll be blessed to see the sunshine in the morning in christ's name we pray amen I hope to see you guys tomorrow, and um, that'll be great. We'll talk to you later.